Good evening everyone, if you don't know, you should know. My name is Ramiz Khan and I'm a filmmaker and a film critic and today's film is Netflix's Mank. Herman Mankiewicz. Mank is the story of Herman J. Mankiewicz, uh, the famous or infamous writer of Citizen Kane. He is played by Gary Oldman and this film is directed by the master David Fincher, who hasn't been making a lot of movies. I think this is his first film since Gone Girl, and that's been, what, six years. And luckily for us, David Fincher has not lost a step. However, this film might not be appealing for people who are super into David Fincher's style and are big fans of David Fincher's films such as The Social Network, Gone Girl, or Seven. This is not as dark as any of those films. This film plays out more like a passion project, and it is a passion project. For David Fincher. You won't get any of the cool and sexy music, you won't get any of that cool crazy CG stuff in this film and sp specified line delivery by actors. You're not gonna get all of that. Mank is a much more free flowing film and it's a very cute film at times as well since it's about the Hollywood people reminiscing about Hollywood and exposing corruption, talking about the corruption and the glamour and the glitz and the darkness of uh, Hollywood. To put it in short, Mank is a sort of film which you probably want to watch alone with a drink or several. And it's one of my favorite actors playing Herman Mankiewicz, it's Gary Oldman. And make no mistake about it, he is a charmer in this one. And the dude is on quite the hat trick. This is the second time he's playing a historical figure, although not as big as Winston Churchill. And this is the second time he has been nominated for playing a historical character. I seriously can't wait till Gary Oldman signs up to play Barack Obama. And I know there's a difference of skin color, but I believe he'll be quite good and he'll rack up a nomination for that as well. But the biggest privilege the story and the script take from this film is the age of Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman, for the lack of a better sentence or words, is an old man and he is 62. He's supposed to be playing a person who's 32 or 33. It does look quite jarring at times. It, it reminded me of the scene in The Irishman when Robert De Niro beats up that store clerk. It looks so friggin fake and Robert De Niro is supposed to be a 30 year old in that scene. You get a lot of that over here. But other than that, Gary Oldman definitely deserves an Oscar nomination for this film. He's just so damn human. He's charming, he's pathetic. He's a jerk, he's an asshole. The story plays out like a race against time as Herman J. Mankiewicz has been placed into rehab for alcoholism, but that is where Hollywood comes into play. He has been tasked to finish a very important script for a very important man. And the way they're motivating him is with alcohol. Of course, what better thing to motivate a person with in rehab other than booze? The way Hollywood works, it's such a great and broad pitch line to make a movie about Hollywood. You know, Hollywood's this massive sprawl. Any film industry is the massive sprawl of dirtiness, sleaziness, cheapness, but you know, it is also very fulfilling as well to make a film. And this film captures all of that. Any, f any sequence or scene which involves a film set, a dinner table, a meeting with a producer is very darn engaging and a whole lot of fun. One of the best scenes of the film is when a bunch of writers are sitting surrounding Gary Oldman, Herman J. Mankiewicz, and they're all pitching a story, making a bullshit one by one, just to, you know, make the producer go, hmm. Because that's what producers do. You know, they don't read scripts. They just go, hmm, that's interesting. There are a lot of good producers in Hollywood, by the way. Not all of them are douchebags. If you're into the world of filmmaking or interested in reading up on grade A assholes, this film contains quite a big one, depending on who you might ask. It contains Orson Welles. Yes, the script Herman J. Mankiewicz has been tasked to write is Citizen Kane. Not, not that Kane. That, that, that's a wrestler. Editor, you're fired. Our film world is quite cynical, and I seriously hope someone in India has the balls to make a film like this about Bollywood. But that's a pipe dream. The supporting cast is quite strong as well, but I'd be pressured to find a performance which is better than Gary Oldman's, 
And it's not like the lineup isn't strong. We got Lily Collins. We got Amanda Seyfried. We got Charles Dance. We got the guy who played the brother from Ozark. He plays Herman J. Mankiewicz's brother in this. And he's quite good as well. But again, none of them can hold a candle to Gary Oldman. They do enough to take the story forward, but it's just not enough to stand out in front of Gary Oldman's performance. I'm pretty sure if you're watching this review and you're into the type of films like Mankiewicz's uh, uh, you would definitely have seen Wag the Dog or Hail Caesar. This film definitely falls into that category of films. If you enjoyed Wag the Dog or Hail Caesar, it's, it's pretty much a given you're going to enjoy Mank as well. However, Mank isn't as glamorous uh, or comedic as Hail Caesar or even Wag the Dog. It is very cynical, sarcastic, but balanced. This is the least David Fincher film out of any of his filmography, but you can really see the love and care he put into this film, as the screenplay for Mank was written by his late father, Jack Fincher. One of the most inventive ways the screenplay decides to transition from one scene to another is by having something like this pop up on screen. Interior, Ramiz's room, day. There are instances whenever a scene has to move into another scene or location, they just do it how it's written in a script. They show the slug line on screen. And that was quite creative. I really enjoyed that part of the film. I can't wait to see another film like this down the future, but talking about our film industry today. A film about Harvey Weinstein? Ding, 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 ding. What a fall from grace, eh? Why do producers exist? Goodness. But anyway, Mank is getting a final score of 4 out of 5 from me. Gary Oldman, as usual, should be the main reason you see this film. And this film is a bit of an anomaly because this is the first David Fincher film which I'm telling you guys to watch. To not watch for David Fincher. Watch this film for Gary Oldman. You're not going to get any of the style that you're used to of David Fincher, but you are going to get an excellent performance by Gary Oldman. Fantastic film. Check it out. Have a drink. Have a great day. I'll see you next time soon. Thank you.